Uh, friends, uh, good morning and thank you for coming. Okay. Uh, so, uh, one small suggestion, uh, will you be able to simply download all the material which is available over here? So, since this is a tutorial talk, I would expect that uh, you can do a bit of coding or little bit of experimentation. Okay. So, and it's actually collectively we can learn. It should not be a one-way type of stuff. Okay. So, some of you might be expert in this particular field. Okay. So, if I tell anything you would like to improve, please feel free to do that. Okay. So, any problems, I can just tell that what are the folders, what folders will be available. Anybody able to download those stuff? Just can anybody show me what are the things you are getting? Hi, yeah, yeah. So, you can find a presentation. That's the slide deck. You can find a folder called assignment underscore web crawler. One MS Word document will be there inside that particular folder. And there will be another folder uh, named as source underscore codes. Okay. So, there, there will be few dot py files, I believe dot py files okay so just download those things first so any query in downloading so three things should be available and if anybody wants a pen drive that's also okay i do have a pen drive too i have uh, executed the code using anaconda distribution okay so i can see that uh, this is the anaconda distribution but my python version is little bit dated it's 3.5 something so if any of you want to install anaconda in your windows machine right now i have the installer in my uh, pen drive you can take it and install it it will take two three four minutes maybe but I can see many of you are having uh, Macs, so I don't have the Mac installer or you have Python already installed. 3.5 plus version. It's there already. And if anybody wants that one, that uh, Anaconda Windows, this one, you can just let me know I have the installer in a pen drive. Anyone wants? If anyone wants, I can share it with you. So, the code uh, will work in Python 3.5 at least, okay? So, okay, are we uh, all settled down? Anyone, if anybody wants, you can just let me know. That Windows installer. Good to go? Everybody downloaded? Okay. Okay. So I'm waiting for another one, two minutes. Okay. So if we run out of time, then I am a bit lucky now that after this session, there is which session? There is a session. Yes. Normally lunch session is a good session to take. Please don't beat me. Okay. <sighs> Feel free to do a bit of experimentation, okay, because the coverage in this particular case is a, a bit wide coverage, okay. The basic principles are simple, but a lot of syntactical stuff is also there that somehow is... Uh, somehow sometimes difficult to remember actually but I will tell you the very very key points okay so within this 90 minute we won't be able to uh, see all the APIs which are available but the basic and key point of this topic okay like concurrency and parallelism it's a general topic and how to handle it in Python and I believe that uh, you will take this forward okay uh, when you go back, uh, but 
even if we take a bit of time feel free to do the stuff over here any question is there please ask me i will try it my best to answer and if anybody knows the stuff they can also pitch it okay now we are good to go can we shall we start shall we start you have a question oh okay okay oh okay okay yeah so everything so codes and all the things so now actually that means you don't need me I have given you everything. So that I do basically before any session, I give everything. After that, I can go for a lunch or breakfast. Okay. Okay. Thank you, friends. Just let me open the presentation. I may skip slides actually since this is a tutorial session. You have everything. You can little bit study of your own also. Okay. So, uh, my name is this one. Okay. So nothing is there in the name. Only a sequence of characters. Okay. So if you transmit that, you will basically lose some bytes, okay? And my Gmail ID is there at the end, okay? So I don't think we'll be able to discuss everything today, but you are always welcome to write me a technical or non-technical mail. That means just saying a hello, okay? Or anything. So this one, if you want, you can just, Acha, already you have, okay, everything, fine. Acha, this is the is the slide deck clear from the back and you have it also you can open it yourself so uh, this is basically the agenda okay means we'll start with few general questions okay i will ask you those questions and uh, you will have to score some marks okay prerequisites after that, we will see few definitions, okay? And after that, process, communicating between process, synchronization between process, sharing memory between processes, then multi-processing, launching, parallel task, example using pool, generator co-routing, async IO based co-routing, brief overview of socket programming, then comparison, then building a concurrent web crawler, okay? So let's not worry. Okay, so it's basically a, uh, a little bit of wide topics actually. So I will tell you the key points. Okay, so anybody is having any query on this topic or anybody who is aware of all the topic so that he can also aware or you have any specific question on any specific topic. Anybody who is, uh, means uh, who wants to learn uh, because I don't know actually na, yet what exactly uh, means so what are the levels you know. Okay, so what shall I assume that we will, shall I assume that we are having a lecture talk from ground up? So as much as possible, I try to teach you the stuff. Shall I assume that? Okay, that will be easy for me. Okay, na? fine. So that means if that be the case, okay. So achha, um, as usual, uh, as you know that my, uh, I'm from India, so my English will be a bit uh, India-like English, okay. So but still I'm speaking uh, slowly. So uh, can you understand me? Okay, fine. Okay, now this forget and forgive this particular stuff right now. Let's see the prerequisite. That will be interesting. And then, why this prerequisite is there? Because there are a lot of topics I have shown, okay? And those topics will be mapped to some of these basic concepts, okay? These are common computer science concept and I would uh, expect that everybody should be, but we will be in sync with these points, fine? So let's start. I'm not going to give any answer, okay? So this is an open, this particular thing is an open forum. What is the difference between a compiler and an interpreter? Volunteer. Anybody, it can be right, it can be wrong, no problem, okay? We are trying to learn. So, please give an answer. You have a mic also or no? If you speak, everybody can hear. So, when you speak, just a little bit loudly, that's so that everybody can uh, hear and we can fight also. We can fight, technical fight, okay? <laughs> Technical fight means what? That say if in a technical thing somebody says that uh, you have written a foolish code, that doesn't mean that that person is telling me foolish. He is telling that you have a lot of scope in improving the code. So we can fight technically, but not what 
physically. Yeah, please. So basically what this compiler doing is uh, translate uh, um, let's say in our case Python code. Okay, not Python, just the uh, high level That's okay, huh? Code. That's it, and create an uh, executable. Okay. The interpreter is only, let's say, uh, executes line by line. Hmm. Which means that huge difference will be in compiling languages, we will compile one time, but we could multiple times, very fast. In, uh, which one will be very fast? Okay. So you are telling that C, CPP, since they are compiled type of, uh, means you compile them, they will be very fast. Why they will be very fast? Because it will be compiled, because for execution, we compile only once. The next time when we will execute it, if there is no change to source code, we don't need to recompile. Very good. So that means what he wanted to say is that, that once you compile and create an executable, and you can run that particular executable file multiple times and you don't have to compile it once more. If not, you change the source code. Okay. But for an interpreter, what happens? In interpreter, we will, interpre we will go line by line. And okay. It. In some cases, it could be mixed so we can translate hmm. something to intermediates. Hmm. Say, for example, like bytecode hmm. to Python, then increase it to hmm. So, uh, basically, uh, what he wanted to, so which one, uh, so interpreter typically will be uh, slower than a compiled stuff. Typically. Why? Because you have the overhead of invoking the interpreter when you run your source code. Okay. In Linux, do you know how, what's the typical, I mean, means have you seen a executable file in Linux? Just a general question. In Linux operating system or in Mac also, have you seen an executable file? Can you let me know the directory where the executable files are stored? Let me know the default directory. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you just be a little bit louder, huh? So can uh, people can take a note and uh, even take a note of these things. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, what's the difference between a process and a thread? And if uh, if this is clear, then uh, if we can answer this, then what is context switching next? I think. Uh, yeah, please. Very good. So one point uh, that as you told that process and thread, the difference will be that it shares memory that is thread and uh, process won't be sharing memory. Okay. So anything more, a bit simpler, process and thread? The process can be, uh, uh, it contains thread. It's a whole picture about uh, the running software. The thread is a component. It can be, we can have multiple thread running in this process. So it's just a subcomponent. What he told actually may not be technically always true for a particular operating system, but what do you mean to say that one process ID can be mapped to multiple thread IDs? Okay. Okay. So that's also, but anything more simpler. So what are the difference? means any advantages, disadvantages of a process and a thread? And can you give me an example of a process? Simply, that will be, forget about computer science. Say you have an Apple make machine or ThinkPad or Linux, anything. Uh, let me know a process. Let me know what is a, show me a process. Show me how many processes are running in your system. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So if you have your Mac machine, command line terminal or Linux terminal, you can simply type what? Small PS and press and enter. Small PS, press and enter and you get a list of all the processes there. Uh, any number associated with the process? Any number? How I can uniquely identify a process? By using process ID, process identifier. And see, uh, now, uh, what's a thread? So, you see that, put it in simply without getting into a lot of uh, technical details is that, uh, when I'm creating a process, say this is one process and I am in Linux-like system, uh, do anybody know how we create a process? 
or if I mean, anybody knows what's the call for creating a process? Anyone else has used the fork call? Fork call? Less number of people. Okay, leave it. So I have a process and from there I am creating another process. So this particular process is say I am watching movie with this particular process. Okay, another process has been created. I am say listening to some audio. So these are the processes. But a lot of overhead is there in creating processes. Overhead means what? Um, so, so why the term overhead is coming into the picture, you will have to do a lot of memory copy operations for creating a process. You will have to keep track of the uh, stack heap. These things are known stack heap of a particular process. So there are there's some overheads associated, computing overhead associated. Now, if people thought that why, uh, but you will have to work with processes, everything is basically a process. So people thought that, okay, so a lot of overhead is there, okay. So let us think of something which is bit lightweight, which is bit lightweight. That means that the, if I'm creating a thread, which is also a control of execution, like a process, but I can have several threads in the context of a single process. Okay, so imagine a process and there you have independent execution path and those are called thread. So it is expected that creation of a thread will involve what? Less overhead. Okay, the first important thing and that's so less overhead. So and there are a lot of actually definitions available over internet. So briefly speaking this that you have a big, you have a process. Now for doing a particular task, I could have created a separate process. But now what I do, I have a task T1. Now I want to do a task T2. For this task T2, I could have created another process. How there are functions, operating system provides those APIs to create a process. But now I am not creating a process. I want to uh, reduce the overhead cost. Cost not in terms of euro, but in terms of computing resources like uh, time to data copy, memory and all those things. So now for doing the task T1 within process P, I have created say T1 and T2 to thread. So, those threads are ideally linked, as you told, linked with a particular process. They have something of their own. They have something of their own. What's the important thing they have of their own? Stack. They have their own stack. But the memory, other memory area, like data segment and all those things are basically shared. So, we expect to have some sort of uh, optimization in creating a uh, thread. Okay. What is context switching? Basically, when we have dumped or all the um, stack yeah. to some kind of area, and then we can replace it with the next one. Typically, in operation system, we have first control block, so we store everything in first control block. Oh, very good. So, what is context switching? Have you seen context switching in your daily life? Context, have you seen context switching in your daily life? Huh? See, every time our manager actually makes us do a context switch. In the morning, I don't know if about here, but I have a, in morning, uh, say 10.30, task T1. Oh, 11.30, task T2. So see, task T1 to task T2. So when I have to switch, then I will have to save the previous tasks pending stuff. And then I go to task T2. And because I will have to come back again to task T1. So, it's actually might be easy for computers and in computers, have you seen context switching? Actually, you have not seen, but every time it happens. Why? Because in your computer, several programs are running or processes are running at the same point of time. You have, an, you have a feel, but actually it's not the case. A small time interval is there process P1 runs, context switch happens. For small time interval T2, process P2 runs, context switch happens, process P3, say in a round robin manner. So see, 
and who does all those things the very good the operating system scheduler so that means this context switching is actually doing no useful task it's actually again an overhead and the scheduler operating system scheduler is coming into the picture which you don't know this point to be noted please one point to be noted means please remember it's basically every time we are having context switching and normally for so many processes operating system scheduler comes into the picture and when operating scheduler operating system scheduler comes into the picture then overhead is there is this concept clear it's an important thing now what is the difference between cooperative and preemptive multitasking so i think i should take another volunteer now ha huh? yeah 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 that is what it is doing one so if i if i theoretically have 100 cpu and i have 100 processes okay so then i can actually schedule i don't i don't need then context switching imagining that io is also 100 io so i can simply schedule 100 tasks to 100 cpus but here the assumption is that obviously that uh, it's you can have one cpu you can have multiple cores but your your processes are in thousands so it's mapping you can't have a practical mapping of the number of tasks or processes with the number of cpu or even the number of cores so in any case we can't avoid context switching and context switching is actually taking some time and it's actually wasting resources seriously it's wasting resources but we can't help we can't help yeah then anything is it clear obviously obviously it happens between threads also otherwise one thread will do sit and won't release so that means for process and thread for both context switching occurs the technique might be little bit different but this must occur clear and context switching is basically you are actually not gaining anything your application program that's an important thing uh, what's a cooperative and preemptive multitasking any other volunteer yes so preemptively it's trying to forecast both of the needs and try to allocate resources in advance Ah, uh, that is, I think, this particular thing, what you are suggesting, this is a, this is, I think, not sure, this one is a bit optimistic. <laughs> okay. So, but in operating system, we have this particular thing, you are, uh, so as far as elements now, but it's optimistic, it's not exactly the thing, but it is very, very important concept, and these first two, three lines, if it's clear, then the entire python this stuff this stuff seems to be a bit complicated will actually be clear just tell me what is preemptive multitasking and what is cooperative multitasking and uh, practically uh, i mean say any operating system is it any making any sense sense means that these are theoretical concepts or these are implemented in an operating system yeah a little bit louder Preemptive means, as you are telling, that preempt means to stop yeah, or somehow to stop forcefully. No more, stop, you continue, then the next one stop, you continue. Very good. So, you are coming to that, he has solved the problem. So, if that be the case, that he is telling that I have several tasks or processes or thread and some scheduler is there. And I have told you that there is a time slice, okay. So, in this type of scenario or structure one process is running for say 2 millisecond then another process is running for 2 millisecond something something like that so is this the way of preemption or cooperation 2 millisecond but i need 4 
बट अगेन ही विल नाउ रन सो इस इज अ प्रियमशन और अ कोऑपरेशन प्रियमशन मींस फोर्सफुल स्टॉप सो इट्स अ प्रियमशन सो आवर ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम शेड्यूलर्स नाउ आर डेज आर व्हाट प्रियमटिव शेड्यूलर्स एंड नॉट कोऑपरेटिव शेड्यूलर्स कोऑपरेटिव शेड्यूलर्स so you can give a you can just take a uh, i mean uh, okay you can check net afterwards also so our os schedulers are typically preemptive schedulers preemptive so processes threads they are preempted and cooperative multitasking is as such not there as far as i know it used to be in maybe windows 3.1 cooperative multitasking cooperative multitasking means what one process uh, sits on the cpu and it will relinquish it only when it chooses to do that so that's a catch then why because you can actually starve all other not so much cooperative which one the cooperative one is not so cooperative <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes 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 cooperative one is not actually cooperative correct <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it depends on the uh, it depends on the individual why they were actually not cooperative is that that the funda is that when process p1 sits and process p2 also wants there is as such as such there was no uh, communication between those two but if something could have been done that is that i have something something which is inside my process forget about thread now some entity inside my process and they can communicate also we don't know how they can communicate also and some library function or library stuff is there which controls the scheduling but not the operating system scheduler things can be a bit better or cooperative i want to tell what is this right now anyone can guess but guessing will uh, end the story quickly okay so what i told you is that cooperative as he told cooperative didn't sound that much they are not cooperating actually okay so that means earlier days windows 3.1 so anybody can give us quick uh, internet search and check that windows 3.0 i am telling correctly or not windows 3.1 multitasking or anybody is connected with internet so can anybody check just for a second that windows 3.1 multitasking cooperative or or preemptive windows 3.1 many of you might not have heard long back when i was in colleges 1994 95 okay windows 3.1 it's basically windows 3.1 multitasking is it cooperative or preemptive Co cooperative multitasking okay so that means that there was a possibility of processes getting hang because actually they couldn't cooperate okay And, but now imagine that this cooperation is a good concept i have something within the context of a process say something magical entities entity 1 entity 2 entity 3 etc and they are communicating okay and they are under the control of a scheduler of a scheduler but which is not the operating system scheduler so since i am not using the operating system scheduler i am actually spending less overhead and my task is also getting done so till now this sounds to be a good idea i believe okay but what is that i won't say right away am i clear where i am trying to head okay now now okay so but i think that uh, then assume you have written program what is the difference between memory allocated between heap and stack you are aware mostly if not ever even when i bit complete i can tell you also anybody want to say the heap memory and stack memory very quickly okay anyone volunteer no answer then i leave it up to the leave it for you for homework not for homework just after i stop speaking then i can explain it to you once more no not sure c programming language anyone has used how many people have used c programming language very good so if so then you should be aware forgot and is forgot malloc you remember a malloc malloc ha malloc is to malloc memory so malloc is getting memory from heap and what's the stack memory 
stack memory is basically the local variables are getting allocated from the stack okay so this is the crucial thing i think i need some more time to explain this but please wait let me continue and you just remind me once when i close and give you some assignment okay uh then to activation record anyone activation record what is an activation record no activation record means uh, say when you are invoking a function invoking a function then some some stuff so uh, anybody so function f1 inside f1 i call f2 inside f2 i call f3 so it's like f1 after that f2 after that f3 so corresponding to these calls some part of the memory is getting allocated which actually stores some stuff so activation record is actually corresponds to a function call so what can happen that you have a nested function call it's going up to say 1 lakh calls okay on the run time then finally what will happen i will run out of memory why because i will have to create the system will have to create nested calls are there okay or even you say recursive calls recursive calls okay so the recursion when you write a program it looks very good it's very nice very short and uh, crisp program recursion but when you run it what happens you give a big number and the lot of activation records are getting created and finally yeah correct stack overflows so that's actually the one of the very key point why this activation record is important but you cannot estimate the you can obvious you can always estimate but you cannot actually tell that what will be the size of the activation record during compilation time i can tell the size of the activation record for a single function but how much it will grow because there can be in a recursive call yeah or it might depend on a user input also the how nested the functions are getting called clear hmm yeah, it should be there is there some limit but obviously you should not try to hit that max stack size limit okay but that is an important factor so what i mean to say is that that uh, people get a bit of a confusion that what exactly the thing why exactly the things are getting overflowed it's basically not a program bug or anything your program is running fine but there are lot of activation records are getting created so it's basically running out of memory so there may not be any bug in your code sometimes it's basically the physical limitation or the virtual memory limitation actually na that's a, that's the thing what is a system call system call means operating system call the operating system services okay priya yeah. hmm so uh, give few system calls example in linux system call means that uh, some operating system calls which are used by everybody even your python interpreter is using your c language program is using so costly costly it operating system call okay so this little bit costly in terms of overhead so suppose if open if close these are c language file handling calls okay so in a higher level c language if you are using that inside the system calls are getting invoked okay any further question i will take okay what do you mean by an ipc give some examples assume you are browsing internet through a web browser is this an example of ipc inter process communication some examples randomly system call means uh say operating system it's basically gives your user program some services okay like if open if close these things are library functions and library function means the c library gives you that say or even you come to open functions in say python file handling function 
you are using python's open function but finally that python's open function will call will call the operating system service so there is a time also associated and a and a uh, say time plus overhead why because from user level automatically it will go to that operating system level and then return back but we are not aware of that so that's an important thing that in many cases you are calling a lot of system calls which but in most of the cases you won't be able to get rid of the system calls why because those are the basic building blocks of any even application program library okay so system call this is the system call it can give a bit of internet search and after the lecture i will again explain it to you once more is clear the system here yeah. very good pipe so can you give an example of a pipe in linux if i have to count the number of users who are logged in how i can use that huh very good who who pipe wc minus l inter process communication we don't have a pen here okay it's a huh oh such okay that's fine i have a pen but what would you write no that's okay because some of the uh, well, I, that's the thing i don't have any place to write <laughs> it's not there so okay because computer science right? computer science means uh, it's not uh, chalk and talk hmm ah chalk and talk means that uh, earlier days in the classroom chalk means that white one na? Uh, have you seen i have seen but i think <laughs> okay i don't hmm, uh, i think was you sh should have seen i believe chalk huh <laughs> but many people you have seen only the white board and the a uh, nice pen markers and chalk the problem was that that if you're writing na then powder that uh, dust powder little bit actually spreads okay but that was somehow manageable okay so uh, inter process communication any example let us take the example of browsing inter browsing internet through a web browser is this an inter process communication i want a clear explanation here it's important you want to say fast or let us give him once the chance yeah please web browser you are explaining to yeah. okay uh, so what we have is a process running the server very good and the process running the client or browser and then uh, these two processes communicate with http messages and, and that's why the process communication excellent okay hmm? <laughs> no it's okay ha huh? please ha huh? uh, can you please repeat Okay. Exactly. So it's basically an inter-process communication. Cross a network. Anyone want to comment this one? Anything is not. Yeah, you want to add. IPC is the same inside one machine. It's not across the system. IPC is to allow process in the same machine to communicate with each other, not across network. But I didn't know about network IPC. No, it's actually ha. Huh, what he told actually, but we a uh, bit generalize this particular thing. Inter-process communication. It's not. I won't take it hard and fast to be a in a single machine communication. Okay. So let's generalize it. But a network, as you told, as he mentioned, that when you are communicating inside the same machine, some examples, common example in Linux world, you have already seen. Na every day you you Linux or your Mac machine. Every day you use your pipe symbol. Pipe. Pipe means say suppose I want to count the number of users who are logged in, or rather anybody uses the command line terminal every day. How many people? Ha, huh, I mean, how many people? Everybody uses the command line terminal, na? 
so you have the command line terminal can you uh, can you count the number of uh, directories which are there in your current directory i want only the count using some sort of communication technique count the count the number of directories which are there in your current directory you can physically count you can do an ls minus l 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay but i want a command which will give you at the end of the line that this this is the number say 30 i want the count of a number of directories in your current directory very quickly whoever answers correctly ah, done a little bit give them a what 10 second time we are counting huh the question clear i want the count of number of answer Oh, I think give, give people a uh, fair chance, okay? Fair scheduler. Little bit time, okay? What the? You, know, you have counted, uh, I mean. I counted with comma. With a? With a comma. Okay, show me. But, okay, yeah. LS minus L, pipe WC minus L is not correct. LS minus, uh, what, uh, ls minus l pipe wc minus l is not correct there will be something else i have told count only the number of directories and don't and don't at uh, first thing first first thing first you need to figure out how to get the directories in linux it is basically preceded by a preceded by a d I uh, should be fine, na? fine command, <laughs> fine command you have used, okay. but everybody may not be knowing the fine command. Yeah, I have <laughs> LS minus L, okay, give, that L, L or LS? LL is what? Oh, you have made an alias. Oh, great. So then you can, huh, you are correct. But there can be another way also, to another couple of ways, but it's, it's the, people will understand. I expected this, so that you can a little bit explain it, okay? The thing. Achha, now I give a bit, how many people have done it? Thank you. She has also done it. Let check once. Ls minus. No, ls minus a means it also includes a hidden file. So okay. So ls minus a wc minus l wrong. Wrong. No, it is basically you might be having only directories. Keep some, keep some regular files also. Touch file one, touch file two. You might be having only directories, so you are getting the right answer. So it's not the first and foremost. Acha, acha. I think uh, let's, uh, friend, can you just little bit explain your answer? A little bit louder. Huh. Just explain the concept, okay? What you have actually done. You list everything inside your current folder by using ls long listing minus l. Then you pipe it into grape. Why? Because you need to filter out the directories. And how you can filter out the directories? By checking which line starts with a small d. What is the command for that? Caret D. Double quote, great caret D. And then I have got the filter of uh, the directories. And now I simply have to count how many lines are there. That's basically the number of directories. Pipe, WC, minus L. Very good. If there can be other ways also. Okay, by using fine command and all. But just and giving an example of an IPC inside a single machine. Thank you. Okay. So these are the things. So that means 
what's the number of port number uh, this one so as i assume browsing the internet that is also done as a distinguish between the terms now these are all networking related terms okay the quickly i am telling that ip means internet protocol icmp means internet control message protocol udp user datagram protocol http hypertext transfer protocol then uh, everything is there so something some diagram is there you might have read it or checked it the tcp ip protocol stack okay anybody has uh, used used means that aware of that particular diagram okay so these things are coming from there i am not detailing these things right away okay so distinguish between a port number and the socket any idea port number and the socket or can you give that example once more from that network communication google to google server port number and socket no i need a simple definition of very simple definition of let me have this concrete example consider you are browsing google.com simultaneously through 10 different tabs slash windows let's not worry about thread process right now by using a browser like chrome from your computer in this scenario please suggest the number of ports that is port number needed locally that means in your computer from where you have invoked the browser and in the server consider there is a single server hosting google.com so that's basically i want the answer is the question clear Yes. Ah, he let him. Ah, please, sir. How many ports on the client side? Ten ports on the client side. Very good. Ten ports on the client side. One port on the server side. What is the port number of that server side in this particular case? It should be port. 80 since hypertext transfer protocol and hmm? so and a client side port uh, 10 ports are we sure excellent so now the important thing here is that that one port number is actually well known that's the server port number in this particular case we have the server port number say 80 for http server okay now the server is also having an ip address ip1 assume or ip is now there are 10 browsers i have opened from my computer so a uh, a tuple will be tuple tuple means record a four tuple you can consider four tuple how source ip address that means your computer's ip address source port number normally we don't if you have not done networking that port number people mostly consider that server port number but here we have a client port number also but normally a programmer don't have to assign a client port number normally why because whenever the uh networking starts we will see those are automatically assigned so if i consider a record record is having four components source ip source port number destination ip and destination port number so if i have four tuple 10 times and these tuples are unique these tuples are unique what are tuple tuple means a record what type of record i am considering record means source ip source port destination ip and destination port so for all these 10 record three things are common what are the three things destination server port correct destination server port destination 
uh, IP address and source IP address. Only one thing is changing. That's the source port number. Source port number. So the data based on the source port number gets demultiplexed into 10 different browser windows. So this explains that why data of one browser window is not getting mixed up with the data of another browser window. Is this clear? Clear? No confusion? Clear? Clear? Too many new words, but the concept is well, well explained. Okay. <laughs> no, new word, but I made it simple actually. Okay. So, port number is not hardware. It's just a number. Okay. What, how I can check port number? What is the command by which I can check the port numbers uh, in, uh, say, uh, how many, uh, what are the port numbers opened in Linux or uh, what? You are using Mac OS. What's the command typically used? There's a command typically used. Yeah. Excellent. Net stack. You can simply run that command in your that black window. Net stack. Very useful command. Network statistics. N-E-T. S-T-A-T. You can use grape and all those things to figure out many things. I think you use that command. It's a very important command. Net stack. Small. Okay. Oh. Race condition, critical section, mutual exclusion. Simple manner, in a simple manner, okay. Race condition, critical section and mutual exclusion. Mutex semaphore con condition variable. Anybody wants a simpler, or anybody can explain these things in a simple manner, quickly. Mutual exclusion. Okay. Right. Fair enough. Huh? Uh, the risk condition is the a little bit for everybody. Huh? Yeah, the risk condition is the producer consumer problem. So you have a process that produces something and there is a process that needs the output of the producer process. And they share some kind of memory where the producer writes something and the consumer needs to read that. From exactly. The or like this, then we get the rest condition because it's not allowed to access the um, memory section uh, of both the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. like this. Or two process need to write at the same time. Correct. Uh, that's not allowed. And for the Mutex and the semaphore, I might guess that semaphore is like a token that a yes, process owns, yes, and yes, then when yes, it huh. ends, it mm. gives away. Huh, it's fine. Uh, and mutex is, is kind of um, uh, a lock. Mm. You can lock a mutex to say, yes, right now I'm consuming this resource, please mm. don't not do anything with it. When I'm finished mm. and I release, mm. I release the lock. Mm. Okay, now let me summarize it quickly. Okay, so see, if I have a, I have a writing pad. I have a writing pad, so consider this a memory. Okay, now, I now tell all of you, okay, all of us are processes or threads. Right here, start writing. I am writing, he is writing, he is writing. So what, what's this called? Now, what will be the final output of this uh, diary? What will the, I am trying to explain one thing. So I am a diary, okay, I am inviting you, come, write something. I am also writing. What will be the final output? <laughs> the final output is not known. The final output is not known. Why? Because one small diary and everybody has come invited to write in it without any control. So basically the output cannot be predicted. Okay? So this is an example of what? race condition where you cannot predict the output because everybody is trying to do something at the same point of time. But if I would have told you to come and read, read something from the diary, whatever has been written, then you could have read it. That won't, 
আর ডু অ্যাজ সাচ এনি ড্যামেজ হি ক্যান মানে এভরিবডি ইউ ক্যান জাস্ট ক্যান বি আ কিউ এ কিউ আর ইফ ইউ আর হ্যাভিং আ বাইনাকুলার ইউ মে সিম্পলি রিড ইট ওকে সো রেস কন্ডিশন ইজ দ্যাট ইউ ইমাজিন প্রসেস ইজ অ থ্রেড দ্যাট ট্রাই ট্রাইং টু রাইট সামথিং অর অ্যাক্সেস সামথিং ওকে উইচ ইজ শেয়ার্ড অ্যান্ড দ্য আউটপুট ইজ নট নোন দ্যাটস আ এক্সাম্পল অফ আ রেস কন্ডিশন ইউ হ্যাভ দ্য রেস কন্ডিশন অলসো নন ডিটারমিনিজিম ইউ হ্যাভ দ্য রেস কন্ডিশন অলসো ইন ওয়ার ডিজিটাল লজিক I remember college days, what? Flip-flop. Yeah. Huh? To avoid race condition, finally we made, I have forgotten, what? JK master slip flip-flop or something like that. You have read, no? Flip-flop, I mean, read means hard. Flip-flop, there was some race condition, typical questions used to come that how I can convert the simple laser flip-flop to a something more so that to avoid the race condition. Okay, so that is also a race condition and this is the software race condition. Okay, clear? Now, mutex semaphore condition variable so that's see and moreover he actually told a uh, nice term it's basically a mutual exclusion mutual exclusion means what that access to this particular area which is basically so uh, this particular area should be mutually exclusion mutually exclusive of one another when i am accessing i'm writing i cannot allow him to write i cannot allow you to write when you are writing i cannot allow him to write but it's not inherently taken care by the operating system inherently these things are not taken care by the operating system so ah uh, say consider a banking transaction you are writing something you are withdrawing money at the same point of time if somebody else in somewhere also tries to do something transaction okay then what will happen the result will not exactly be known or it will be a garbage result okay so these are the examples of race condition that means you should ensure that race condition what doesn't occur so how to do this particular thing there are ways there are ways okay one of the ways is that that of and moreover the problem is that operating system is not giving you the operating system cannot guarantee in your application code that whether race conditions are avoided or not that's the difficult thing of programming okay now these are some of the and what is this critical section critical section is basically can be defined as that part of the code which tries to access that shared resource it's not exactly the my diary so he i'm considering him to be a piece of say code and his eyes or hands are accessing that so that part of the code which particularly accesses that area is called critical section or critical region take a note i think you're taking a note and please give an internet search also okay afterwards okay i will ask questions so take a test after this okay so critical section mu acha these mutex semaphore condition variable okay so see all those things are it's again there are lot of things are written on the internet but the bottom line thing is that these are some primitives these are some primitives primitive means what operating system api which will help you to avoid race conditions these are some primitives like say as i told you that what i can do now is that now i am having that in my diary again taking this diary example writing everybody including me process or thread okay and my body this part hand say this is a piece of code okay what i will do and imagine that there is a lock there is a lock global lock now what i will do is that everybody's body before he writes before he uses the hand lock critical before entering the critical section use a code called lock and after coming out write a code called unlock and that lock can be accessed by everybody so once he his code does that lock if everybody of us tries to get that lock we won't be able to get it because that's a global lock and he can write something so he executes his critical section then he comes out of it and before coming out he has unlocked and now other people can take turn if he now gets the lock 
write something on my diary, then coming out, unlock. Clear? That's the basic thing. So these, so, so again, mutex is a bit simpler, as you told, lock unlock. Semaphore, similar thing can be, means somebody calls, somebody calls a mutex to be a, you have heard of it, huh? interview question, binary semaphore. Lock, unlock, two state. Lock, other people tries to do, unlock, can't. Until and unless a particular thread unlocks that. Semaphore, somewhat more features than a mutex, okay. This was the first primitive. It was conceptualized by a famous computer scientist named as, you can, should know the name, Dijkstra. E.W. Very good. Who told Dijkstra? Oh, great. E.W. Dijkstra. Ah, you can, can you spell it from internet? E.W. Dijkstra. Dijkstra's algorithm. So, he, so, should be, even if you don't listen my talk, at least, if you can learn about Dijkstra, that will also make sense. Okay? So, mutex, semaphore, and condition variable are a bit sophisticated. Why a bit sophisticated? It's basically what? That sometimes, ra, that uh, here, as you can understand, that there is a bit of sleeping, sleep. Sleeping means locking, then doing something, then unlocking. Okay? So, that means some sort of busy waiting is always there for other processes. Busy waiting means what? It's basically trying to see whether the lock is there or not. All of you are there. You have done a lock. You have done a... Then you are writing in my diary. At that point of time, all the other people trying to check, trying to poll. That's actually waste CPU cycles, okay? That is called busy waiting. So to avoid that, we can have a bit of sophisticated primitive called condition variable. Okay? Basic thing. This one I am leaving it right now. May not be required today, but I will come back after some time. Leave that, re-entrant code. Anybody is aware of what is a re-entrant code? Okay. Yeah, but it's a it will require a bit of more explanation actually. It will be your I understand that you have, but I'm just leaving it for now. Okay, so static analysis, dynamic analysis, any idea? Re entrant code means if I don't talk of thread, it won't be able to explain it. Anybody? Static analysis, dynamic analysis, as such, not required for this class. Static analysis of a program and dynamic. Static analysis, you know, because you have used, uh, uh, what, you have used GCC? So, tell me the name of a static analyzer used for CCPP. Oh, any open source thing that I also don't know. Static analyzer, can you tell anybody? Okay. Le Very good. For Python, it will be PyLint. PyLint. This one, na? Aha, uh, many. Okay. So, if I have this piece of code, okay, and then if I simply run static analysis, I am getting so much number, so I am good. 9.47 out of 10. Why? I may have fixed my code. Okay, fix means to show you I may have made the static analyzer happy actually, but somehow or the other, now if I simply, if I simply, uh, say, I can comment out, na? okay. And now I have commented out the function doc string. Now I am running the Okay. This is basically PyLint. Basically it checks the code, not it's a statically analyzing the code. Why? Because there is a guideline called PEP8. PEP8, Python Enhancement Proposal 8, where you have a coding guideline. So, critically important for production level code. And even if you are in academics, please try to follow any academic uh, professors are there. From anybody is there from academics here? Academics or 
academics means i mean to say uh, uh, studying now or uh, teaching in a college anyone you are very good okay so here if you can get a chance tell people to use for any languages the static analyzers actually so it's basically good coding practice clear take a note of that py lint p y l i n t n t lint this is called linting py p y l i n t py lint l i n t okay now uh see see what we will uh, what we will do actually is that as usual that we are having now the basic background now what i will do is that i will tell you so this particular slide is having all the code and all those things fine i will tell you the flow because if i have to browse through each and every slide that i won't be able to do it okay it will take time because already scheduled time another sign 25 minutes left even if i drag it i won't be able to cover all the slides so so don't worry what i will do i will tell you the what is the flow and then the important slide and the variation and still we are here you can just go through the slide once okay now let's come back to the so this you now have you now actually know most of the thing okay the only thing python so please remember process thread context switching overhead inter process communication race ca race condition uh, then another important thing we told uh, we told what cooperative preemptive those things everything now you know now what is to be shown is just let's follow this one and we will understand <coughs> see now now see true para acha now one a few okay already we have seen the definitions and just check a few more definitions actually this is an important slide just read it for a minute so read it for a minute this slide <coughs> which one is not clear this is critical so we are trying to now can you tell me that uh, why first of all the word parallelism and concurrency they are not the same the first thing first okay pure parallelism is actually running two processes or to thread simultaneously see and then ideally you are having multiple processors here this is an example of parallelism parallelly but if you have a single cpu and we know it very well that is time shared so and if i consider the scheduling to be preemptive scheduling and that is the case so for a single cpu single core cpu i can't have pure parallelism so what i get that's basically something virtual the time slices are so small that we are not uh, we cannot see the context switch we understand that only one program is running at the same point of time i have 10 browser window but you have a single cpu will you be able to run parallelly 10 browser window no you cannot but they are running you can say they are running concurrently and that's an example of a simple example na time sharing so that's the difference between a parallelism and concurrency thread process we know this one now is this thing clear mm -hmm. if your operating system is running preemptive with a preemptive okay i say i program at some to run a parallel how can this happen oh, tell me once more so my my operating system is running with preemptive 
operating system running preemptively means the operating system scheduler is running the yes. applications exactly. applications preemptively yeah exactly but then i cannot write any parallel application or i can you can't write any parallel application I cannot I cannot okay but this is what, okay cannot so in a single theoretically you cannot no. in a single you have a single processor no, even i, I can CPU. two cpu say two process means say parallel means that is schedule one thing is shared you have a single core process p1 is scheduled to this core and process p2 is scheduled to this core okay so at that point you can tell that these two are run parallelly parallelly but the word somebody takes this parallelism and concurrency in a similar manner but the thing is that the pure parallelism will come continuously this is running and continuously this is running and in a single computer a single cpu you can basically run how many at a time one one na? single core so basically you are achieving pseudo parallelism something like that na concurrency parallel means so many parallel control unit and parallel okay so that's a big uh, costly thing so we'll have to boil down finally to something which is easier basically now what is this one coroutine coroutine acha now now the question is that why we are trying to understand this parallelism and concurrency why first of all does it ha huh? that's a catch the first answer will be speed up but is it that only speed up that's my question is it that only speed up no at least uh, uh, okay man means uh, speed up but actually that technically what will be the turn exactly exactly or in other word i can say that i can optimize the waiting times i can optimize the waiting time means what happens see if i were running a networking process and it's trying to fetch some data and at that point of time but it will have to wait to get the data i cannot make it fast it will have to wait but at that point of time i can actually make him away from that blocking io and can schedule somebody else but in any case that time what that person will take he will take to get the data so using uh, using concurrent method i cannot i cannot means make that time shorter of io time shorter clear na in any case you are fetching network data whatever time is required that too you will take because this depends on the network so what this construct will help us to do at that point of time when i'm waiting to get some data at that time the other people are getting blocked that is bad so i will put him in on some side and try to schedule other people at that point of time so as he told so it will effectively uh, optimize the waiting times clear so it's not only speed up clear clear okay so coroutine this is a definition now we will see what is that but remember process thread everything is preemptive and coroutines are non preemptive or cooperative fine now uh, now for this python how the things will go now it's having it's having process it's having thread so you can write a multiple process code okay typically where this or multi multi threaded code typically 
when do you need to write this type of code for most of the professional applications okay you need to write a multi threaded code or multiple processes code why because in many of the application that's a client server applications are there okay so several requests are coming from the client and your server your server needs to handle those requests so your server cannot make all the people wait arbitrarily that means this uh, ensuring concurrency is actually crucial that anybody should not be getting blocked that's the important thing okay so this is important in our life any professional piece of networking code or some other code these constructs will be used and another thing important thing it's not only for the speed up it actually one important thing is that to optimize the waiting times why because even if uh, even if because for an io you might have seen for an io even today in my laptop for when i am accessing a disk it's too slow even if i have a say what this uh, what intel 8 or what is this intel processor intel 5 6 ha huh? intel what is i5 sorry i5 i5 i7 processor but still io it's slow so i will have to spend that time even to make uh, means how i will save the time i cannot save and even in the operating system i have seen it's not properly even this windows operating system is not properly handled that io part sometimes it get hangs so i will have to give that time but during that time i will have to ensure that other people are not other processes are not getting blocked that's one of the key point okay so the techniques are what you can use multiple processes multiple processes you can use multiple threads everything supported by python okay comparing threads and process at least in python which one is preferable more preferable if you have ha uh, yeah definitely Mm. <coughs> Very good. So, if you are using a process, but if I have multiple processors, at least I can ensure that I have now two, three processors. Say, now multiple. I have multiple processes, so the processes can be scheduled to multiple processors. so now i get some time benefit because i have multiple processors but even in this case python threads implementation won't allow won't allow you to schedule it in multiple processors okay so threads are a bit preferable than processes okay so i believe that we can uh, take a bit of more time okay no problem na little or you are uh, just you want to leave at 1 i think 10 uh, 15 minutes more will be okay okay so now key point i will tell and share the presentation with you so we will hear for another at least 15 20 minutes 15 minutes i believe that please don't uh, please please don't get angry okay so we'll have a lot of lunch fine okay good thank you and so process now quickly i am telling you what are the important things to take a note from this slide then you will be just uh, i will tell you a little bit of things to do obviously not complete complete things okay so see this is a simple example of using a process okay so follow this toc table of content we won't be confused okay follow this table of content process based parallelism so communicating between processes synchronization between processes why it is required required to avoid the race condition okay 
sharing memory between processes it is basically one form of ipc called shared memory multiprocessing using process pool now see basically this one is not but this one and the first one only difference is that process pool gives you a little bit of more sophistication some more abstraction but whatever you can do using process pool you can do using the simple process also okay so these are the because python has also evolved version and version okay so initially there might be this one after that this one after that this one i think that's the logic using process pool now threading module you can use the threading module but to more simpler using the thread pool but it does mostly the same thing okay now this coroutine i will this is an important thing async io recently been introduced recently means i think python 3.3 or 4 plus that specifically is a bit more sophistication which i told you the cooperative multitasking coroutines are some entities inside say one process or a thread which can communicate with each other does a cooperative multitasking and under the purview of the library operating system is not getting involved so highly scalable highly scalable so okay now comparison and building a concurrent web server will be your assignment homework okay tomorrow we will check see is the flow clear so i am not going so i won't be able to uh, talk of a lot of code but is the basic concept clear or any question here okay now let us see a bit of code like say this so this is the process code very simple but the same thing can be done using a process pool also which is a sophistication of this process api but basically they are the same linux process using fork system call okay communicating between processes using pipe but normally we don't need all those things because you have the pipe in your shell is communicating between processes using pipe communicating between processes using queue okay all codes are there only thing is that that as i think we are running a short of time you do it yourself i am here but i will actually end up at around 110 or 115 whoever wants to go for lunch they can go but i am here anybody can ask me any question but let me at least complete the key talk that is fine communicating synchronization i have already told you about the race condition example of using a lock simple less race condition i have skipped the semaphore part sharing memory between processes it's basically called shared memory shared memory okay process pool process pool is a little bit of a easy to use api compared to the process process pool pool means say in this particular piece of code uh, everything is there with you okay so in this particular piece of code i have used a process pool i have brought a process pool and what the code is supposed to do i want to find out all the files and directories inside my root directory okay now i get the path i get those path path means how many directories are there within my current directory and throw those path to the pool of processes so this function using this function i am getting the list of directories in my current directory and i want to walk through those so every absolute path i am actually giving to that process pool by using the map function so map means what one process getting mapped to one argument okay this is example of a process pool using threading module see threading module is basically how you can create a thread so i am creating several thread to get few images so creation of a thread threading dot thread thread dot start and i am having a list here to get those thread ids fine and trying to count and this please remember that normally you will be joining the thread joining means you wait for the threads to complete fine fine so thread create thread 
then do some activity inside the thread what is the activity here download image so you can simply run the code and see download image is a function so this function will be invoked by every thread and how many threads are getting created that is image urls there is actually some urls okay you can put some url so if you put 10 urls 10 threads will be created so now in parallel again the question in parallel doesn't mean that threads are running in parallel because i have one cpu okay so it means that context switching happens but when one thread is getting say doing that io task another thread gets scheduled another thread did so it's not actual parallelism and in any case as he explained in python the thread the catch is that the interpreter doesn't allow the threads to get scheduled to multiple cores due to an architecture okay that's basically it is having a global lock that's the thing but in any way threads can be used okay threading module then similar thing with the help of thread pool what i can do with threading module i can do with thread pool but thread pool gives you a little bit more advantage higher level api nothing big issue okay similar thing using process pool same thing can be done using process also but this pool they are giving you a bit of more flexibility given some assignment now this initial part this generator based coroutine was earlier used now so we have now understood what is a coroutine what is a coroutine coroutine process thread everything is preemptive that means operating system comes into the picture okay so overheads are there context switches happen now we have something called coroutine so imagine coroutine to be some entity inside one thread or a process and now they can actually uh, work cooperatively under the control of a scheduler but that scheduler is not the operating system scheduler that scheduler is the library scheduler so should be fast clear but it looks to be a little bit tricky but it's simply it seems that i have coroutines so this is basically a bit important you have i think several might be i don't know here uh, normally in conferences you have lectures on this async io itself actually so async io is a module name i am having three coroutine okay three coroutine how you define a coroutine it's basically uh that is Achha, sorry these are generator based coroutine earlier syntax so let me uh, le let me start with this one so this one should be used the earlier syntax can may be uh, skipped actually so now async dev coroutine one async dev coroutine two so these are three coroutines basically what are these something like a thread but however they are not preempt they are not impacted by preemptive scheduling they will run of their own inside the context of a thread and they will be controlled by a thread scheduler not the thread scheduler but a but a ha, async io scheduler okay so here you see these are the three coroutines and near here uh, here this await await means what relinquish control relinquish control await that means i am now gone you can take control see it's not a normal function call it's little bit it's the imagination is that this see this statement this particular statement say you are getting three tasks here this particular statement basically three coroutines are there it simply floats the three coroutine inside that thread now one coroutine two coroutine three coroutine okay they are not getting controlled by the operating system scheduler but they are like thread imagine one big thread three coroutines okay this await means relinquishes control okay but it doesn't mean that sleeping two second means this sleeps two second that sleeps two seconds and this sleeps one second that is basically five second no that's not the thing when he is sleeping for two second at that time control is released another person also can sleep another person could also they are not getting blocked but the only thing is that these calls please take a note of that these calls are not the standard library calls these sleep is the async io sleep that is the only catch one thread you cannot see a thread imagine one thread now you have created three 
coroutines and simply have floated them here floated them now and the loop is running until completed now they can run basically concurrently and it's basically the cooperative multitasking happens and they are controlled by the library here not the OS so that means overhead is less clear hey, clear means at least remember after that though I'm here you can ask questions so this is basically as far as so I'm not telling anything based good or worst or something like that I am telling you the technique so I have actually discussed all the three techniques what are the three techniques if it is having process it is having thread it's having now async IO okay apart from this async IO there are other third party packages also like say green late twisted those are the things but that not in python standard library tries to do something similar okay and what and what if i now okay these are networking piece of code okay let's let's not worry about the networking stuff leave it for the time being let me just tell you the differences and that time you can have a now let's see this theoretical part and this will make the things more clear whatever the things we are not able to do what I believe that you will be doing just after lunch I am here as I told you that the code part this is the thing important three things are there that's basically python concurrency and parallelism okay I have tried to give in the overview every topic can be can become a individual two hour lecture of its own so see this particular thing okay, another important thing is that in my slide everywhere whatever or possible I have given the references that is important. So from this slide we can see that async. Here this particular slide, this particular thing, some references is taken from this YouTube link. He is I think a, a good programmer and something even I was thinking that you can actually debate. You can actually debate. It's that nothing that whatever I have written in the bow or whatever has been uh, copy pasted or edited is actually to be true. So we can debate and fight. So are you agreeing, mostly agreeing with that? Something is written by me. So after thinking, so are you all, everybody mostly agreeing? So that uh, means again, I am not telling through this slide which one is good, which one is bad, which one is better. I am just comparison. You have thread, you have processes, you have coroutines. Async IO coroutine. So it's up to you. Okay, so I'm not biasing that here, the thing is that even in my mind, that uh, overall, say, scalability. So here, directly, he says that, he says particularly, that in case of a process, the scalability is low. But C programmers will tell that, oh, what you are telling? I can write a process code using Linux system calls only. And now the system calls are very optimized. So I can scale up the code. So why do I need to use async then? This type of arguments can be there. Okay. But in general, it makes sense. Scalability low means that. So lot of, lot of processes, overhead, so less scalable. Coroutine, as you can understand that, as you can understand what? Inside the context of a thread. So no preemptive switching, no thread switching. That means should be very lightweight bottom and what is, what's the minus point minus point is that socket calls normal socket calls or blocking calls you won't be able to use the sleep call has been used but that sleep call is from async io sleep call okay then thank you so no argument little bit no fighting okay thank you then so i am here for okay Thank you.